So my name is Chris Kroninger with Army Research Laboratory. So I'm going to talk to you about novel air mobility. Uh, so just to remind you of some things you probably heard in the thrust overview. So some of the capabilities we're concerned about with air mobility uh, include our agility, ability to move into confined spaces, move between indoor and outdoor, get in those complex <laughs> Army environments. We're interested in robustness, which for air vehicles is primarily our ability to reject gusts. Uh, turbulence driven perhaps by wind blowing through the urban environment. These are very complex and powerful uh, uh, disturbances relative to what you'd experience on a manned aircraft. And then we're also interested in the uh, range and endurance of these small vehicles, which becomes challenging at small scale. So, oh, already ahead. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show a live demonstration of this video today. We had a confluence of an ill pilot and some hardware problems. So you can see these in the demo a hardware display later this afternoon. Uh, but the first platform I'm talking to you about is the cyclocopter. So this is an unconventional rotary system. Uh, it has the potential to be aerodynamically efficient in certain contexts uh, relative to a conventional rotor. Um, but its, uh, I think, biggest strength is in its controllability by having this sort of uh, um, cycloidal uh, motion to it, it can basically direct a thrust direct vector in any direction it wants to reject the disturbance or to drive it in the direction we want it to go. So uh, I'm going to start with some movies and talk a little about it. So this is a larger scale version. This is essentially what was the first flight of a practical cycloidal vehicle. Um, this concept was tried in many forms and scales over the years, um, but really perfected under this program. So this is about a 500 gram platform. You can see that moving forward. I think that, yeah, five meters per second, flying at about five meters per second. It can hover well. Um, I'm gonna, instead of just letting that play, jump to the next video, if my clicker will abide. Uh, so we spent a lot of time working to understand the physics to allow us to make a very small platform. So this is a truly handheld system with 29 grams. Uh, in order to get here, there was a lot of experimental study. Uh, but also a lot of interrogation through the numerical tools that were developed in the program. CFD tools, multi-body dynamics sorts of codes. Again, you can see some of these over in the poster session, and they were hinted at, I think, this morning in the thrust overview. So this was a great connection between the analysis and the experiments coming together to make that capable. Um, so first ever demonstration of a small uh, cycloidal rotor. Uh, we think this can be a very agile platform to, to operate in Army environments. So the next platform I have for you is a hybrid aircraft. So this hybrid aircraft is designed to provide the soldier with versatility, be able to do the hover and basic maneuvering that a quad rotor has, uh, but also be able to convert to a forward flight sort of motion when we need longer range, more endurance. Uh, so uh, my colleague Steve Nogar is going to demonstrate this for you in, in just a moment here. Um, what you see is a flying wing with two rotors on top of it. Those rotors are articulated on servos in order to control that to move it forward to, through those transitions. I'm going to step back here just a little bit as he flies this, and I'll try to narrate as it moves along. So go ahead when you're ready, Steve. All right. So it's going to assume a hover position in just a moment here. And then it will do the extent of the forward flight transition that it can do within this small space. So we don't have a large enough room for it to really take off and get into that forward flight mode. But it will do some lateral motions as well to show the agility that you have on a quad rotor as well. So it maintains the capabilities to hover in place, move laterally, um, but uh, it can also move rapidly in forward flight and do so with relative efficiency. So, and I'll skip that video. So in order to make that happen, there's been a lot of development of nonlinear, in this case in particular, a backstepping nonlinear controller, model-based controller to allow that to work. And again, we think that the, uh, this offers some versatility to the soldiers for a small system uh, in terms of range, payload, efficiency, et cetera. All right, the last demo I'm gonna talk to you about is uh, less about the platform and more about the controller itself. So you can imagine uh, in certain scenarios, surveillance, for example, an aircraft is going to spend uh, a lot of time in the same place. Uh, this is an, this is what we'll show off on a quad rotor is an experience-driven 
uh, controller. So it will learn about the gust field environment as it goes through a space, and when it returns to a space it's been, having you gained some knowledge about that, it can better navigate those spaces. So, uh, oh. so Alex Spitzer is going to take this one off. So we've got, uh, can you turn the fans on? We've got two fan banks here blowing laterally or perpendicular to each other. So we've got two streams of air uh, meeting in the center here to create a very complex vertical flow pattern. What Alex is doing is he's going to have that aircraft commanded to try to fly a circle in the, through that gust field. So you can see it being buffeted, being pushed out of that circle from that trajectory. That's all error in its flight plan. And as it continues to go around that loop several times, it's learning about this space, learning about the gust environment, and it will develop controllers to try to compensate for that. So as we go on, this flight should become a little bit more, a little smoother and smoother as it goes. and it returns to home. So what you saw, uh, an experience-driven uh, controller designed to uh, reject gust or improve gust performance, make the aircraft more efficient in these very uh, turbulent space, uh, spaces where the Army operates. So I've probably got time for a quick question, if any. Otherwise, I will introduce uh, Dr. Vijay Kumar from the University of Pennsylvania to talk about perch and stair capability.